friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day 10 of my 2017 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be using this super cute Get Yeti set from Neat and Tangled. And I'm actually going to be doing some watercoloring today. So I've got my Sakura Koi watercolor sketch box that I have never used. I'm going to set that off to the side. I've also got some water in a well and I have a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock taped down to a cutting board and I'm using that tooth side up because I like the texture. I'm going to take a wide flat brush and just put some clean clear water all over that so it's nice and saturated and then I'm going to begin to pick up some color. I'm going to start by softening up this first little block here and it's going to be a nice pretty aqua color and I'm going to drop some of that in. I want it to be pretty random, so I'm just kind of plopping it down and then adding some water where I think it needs it to help it flow a little bit more. Then I'm going to dip into this darker blue over off to the side there. Sorry I couldn't fit the whole sketch box on camera, but it's just a little bit of a deeper, more traditional blue, maybe like a French blue, and I'm going to drop some of that in as well. And then there is a third blue that I'm going to dip into, and that's got more of a royal blue. It's more of a bright blue, especially when it's not uh, watered down. And I'm going to put some more concentrated color here and there. Kind of just let that meld and move with the other colors that I've got laid down. Once I'm happy with that, I'll just take my heat tool and dry that back. And then I'm going to come in with a second layer of each of those three colors to just build up the vibrancy. And I'm trying to keep it a little bit darker towards the bottom and let it go fading off towards the top. And once I'm happy with that vibrancy, I'll just bring in my heat tool again and dry that once more. Moving on to my images, I have quite a few stamped out because I want to use these to make a scene card. And I stamped these on some Tim Holtz watercolor cardstock as well, but I did use the smooth side. This paper has um, a smooth side and then a side with more tooth. And I like to use the side with the tooth for the backgrounds and then the smoother side is a little bit easier for stamping on. So I'm just diluting some of that aqua color and using that to shade in my little snowman. I'm also going to color in the Yeti's face and hands with this kind of aqua blue. I'm keeping it a little bit more concentrated around the outside of his face to add some shading and then blending a little bit softer towards the center. When I stamped out my images, I used VersaFine Onyx Black ink and then while that ink was still wet, I went ahead and gave that a coat of clear embossing powder and heat set that and that just helps me to really stay inside the lines especially since watercolor is something that I'm still really a beginner at. Um, I think it's a super fun uh, medium to paint with but it's not something that I'm an expert at by any means and so having that little bit of a raised barrier from the embossing powder really helps me to stay inside the lines and kind of control the flow of the paint a little bit better. So now I'm dipping into this mustard yellow color and coloring in most of my dog. He's got a few spots and then um, his ears will also be a darker shade, but I wanted to give him just a base color. I'm also going to use this shade for the base of my log cabin. And you'll kind of see that I bounce around from image to image. I just want to make sure that the area next to where I'm painting is completely dry, even with that embossing powder. Um, I just want to be extra careful so that I don't have any bleeding of colors that would not look good. So now I'm mixing up a gray and doing some shading on my Yeti. So I just laid in some shadows and then I'm just taking some clean water to blend that out so that he doesn't lose too much of that whiteness, but he still has a little bit of depth and dimension to him. I'll water down that even further and add a little bit to my penguin's belly as well. I am adding some of the cranberry red color to the dog's scarf and that was a little bit too dark for me for the first layer so I just added a bit of water to that. I'm also going to use that shade to color in the little bird. 
and the middle section of my snowman's hat. Next I'll be moving into the dark brown and I'll add that to my little dog's ears and the spots on his body. He's my favorite image in this whole set. I just think he's so cute. I'm going to add a second layer of the aqua blue to the Yeti's face now that that part has dried. Just kind of smooth that out and give him a little bit more depth. And his hands as well. I'm using black to color in my penguin, so I'm kind of doing the shadowed areas first since it's such a strong color. And then as some of that pigment wears off my paintbrush, I'll go ahead and finish up the rest of him. And by the way, the brushes I'm using are from the Silver Black Velvet line, and this is a number two round. It has a nice fine tip. I'll also use the black to color in the buttons on the little snowman and his nose. And I will also color in the front of my bird so that it looks like a cardinal. Now that my dog has dried, I'm going back into the mustard color to just add a bit of shading. I'm dipping into an orange to color in the penguin's beak and his little feet, and I'll do the cardinal's beak as well. I'll dip into the gray to add just a little bit of shading to the white parts on the snowman's hat. And then I'll pick up a little bit of a darker red to add some shading to the rest of his hat and also to the dog's scarf and to the cardinal. For the dog's antlers, I'm taking that dark brown again, but I'm just using it very sparingly and I'm going to blot that off with a paper towel when I'm done just to lighten it up a bit so it's not the same exact color as his ears. I'm going to take that cranberry red and really lighten that up with a lot of water and then add some rosy cheeks to each of my little critters and my snowman as well. And then I thought I would add a little pop of green in there for some traditional Christmas colors. So I'm going to paint in the roof of the log cabin and the door. I'll add some gray for the chimney. And there's no purple in this palette, so I'm going to take some of that royal blue and a little bit of that cranberry red and mix up a shade of kind of indigo and then I'm going to use that to color in my mountains. And it came out really dark at first, but I blotted that up and watered that down quite a bit and made it nice and soft purple in the end. I'd left that sign for last because I wasn't sure what color I wanted to paint it, but in the end I decided to go with the same green that I used on the door and the roof of the log cabin just to kind of carry that color across the card a little bit more. So that's how our images are looking. I'm going to set those aside to dry and go back to our background. And that's how that's dried. I'm going to take some Copic Opaque White and put some out on an acrylic block and then I will add a little bit of water to that so it um, just dilutes it a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and just flick that all over my project so that I have this nice little bit of snowflakes falling. It wasn't quite enough for me so I'm adding just a little bit more and I'll do that one more time just so I have a little bit more of the larger drops and I was much happier with that result. I trimmed out my background with the Avery L finish frames. I love that stitching detail they have. And then I used the W plus nine landscape borders for my snow banks. I've got one mounted on some foam tape and the other one I'll be gluing straight down to the card with some Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I'm taking care to line up the stitching detail on the sides and then I will just pop up my front heel right over top. I'll be adding my images with a mixture of the Tombow Mono Multi Glue and foam tape. So I'll be using the liquid glue for the images that are going to be on the distant hills and that is the trio of mountains and a little log cabin. 
The Yeti has foam tape at the top and I'll add a little liquid glue to the bottom so that he's perfectly level with the front hill. So I'm adding the Yeti right to the right of the log cabin and then the little dog will be on his left. The snowman is going to go on the right side of the card and I'm going to center him between the little cardinal and the penguin. So the cardinal will also just get some liquid glue because he's flat on that front hillside. And the penguin will also get liquid glue since that hillside is quite high. And the last thing to add to our scene is the little banner that says Yeti or not. And that sentiment will continue onto the inside of the card. My card base is a piece of Lawn Fawn Blue Jay cardstock scored and folded to a standard landscape style card. And I'm just going to add my panel right over top. And since our card base is such a dark color, I'm going to add an insert and I'm going to stamp that with some Lawn Fawn Blue Jay ink, so it's the matching ink. And I'm using the little dog with the reindeer antlers and the sentiment, it's Christmas time again. And I just ink that up twice and stamp that down. I'll add that to the inside of our card with some more of the liquid glue. Just making sure to line that up nice and straight. And to finish things off, I'm going to take some Studio Katia crystals. I have both the snow and the iridescent crystals. And I'm just going to pour a few of those out on my work surface. Just a few of each shade. And then I'll grab my Ranger Multimedia Matte and just add a few dots here and there. And then I'll grab my pick me up tool and just begin to press those down into place right over top of that liquid glue. And I really like this adhesive for um, gems and things like this that are a bit more dimensional. It really grabs hold of these and it even holds through the mail. So that's always good when you want to send out your cards and have them arrive at their destination in as nice a shape as they left your craft room. So I added a fair bit of those, all the ones that I had poured out. And lastly, I'm going to take some crystal stickles and I'm just going to add it to a few little places. Because this is a liquid glue and you know the watercolors are also liquid, it would reactivate them if I went over any colors. So I'm just using it on the white parts. So I used it on the Yeti's horns and the snowman's hat and pom-pom. I was gonna put some on the chimney, but I decided against it and just went to the snow caps on the mountains instead. And that is going to complete our card for today. I'm gonna to pick that up to the light so you can see all those pretty gems and sparkle and give you another look at the inside. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. I'd really appreciate it. Here's an extra couple videos from the previous two years of holiday card series. This is day 10. So hopefully those will tide you over until the next ones. I hope you have an amazing day. Bye-bye.